I want to chuck it over to to Dortmund. Um, I, again, I, my attitude is to be a little bullish on the future. In the sense, yes, next season they'll come back, probably without Jude Bellingham, but you know they'll have a big wad of money in his place. Yeah. If they can heal from the trauma, and I know that's a big if. But can you from that? I mean, <laughs> people have suffered setbacks, right? Know, but that's a hell of a setback. Oh, look, Sebastian Haller came back from having freaking cancer, right? He could heal from a missed penalty. No, no, for sure. And a terrible uh, performance, because by the way, the first goal, I yeah, yeah. down to him as much as, as, as Emery Sean. Um, I don't think they're in a bad position. My one thing about this club, which I don't understand, and please, you, Jan, you help me understand. It's tense. It matters. The stakes are high. You need to make a substitution, and you send on uh, this seventeen-year-old kid, just on seventeen years, Julien Duranville. Julien Duranville, who I've never played for Dortmund before, literally has never played. You send him on your debut and a title decider when you have, I think, at that point they they had Mukoko on the bench, they had uh, Man, Anthony uh, yeah. Modest, they had Gio Reyna, who you know, portion of people in the U.S. think that he's the reason they were even competing for the title at this stage. Can you talk a little bit about that Dortmund mentality? That that because maybe I mean to a time about this, but this is not the time. I'm not saying he cost them the game, although I don't think it was great when he came on. That was not um, too bad, I thought. But what what would prompt the manager to do that? What what would make Eden Terchus say like, yeah, rather than guys who got us this far, who've been through the wars, I'm going to send in the 17 year old kid for his debut. Well, I think if if I'm going to be very populistic, if I'm going to be very tabloid. I think there are times when a manager get that feeling, I have to do something very, very differently. With other coaches, you can say you get a God syndrome because you will think that if I put this guy on now and he get the decider, that was a big decision by the manager, Edin Terzic. I'm not saying Edin Terzic did that, but I reacted the same way uh, you guys uh, are doing. Uh, to, to Dortmund, uh, how they, they do things, I think is down to cultures. It's, it's down to, you, you have to get that winning culture back, like Manchester City in the Champions League, Arsenal in the Premier League. You need to do that. If, if we tell some people coming down from another planet and they will say what happened is typical Dortmund and typical Bayern, and they will, they will understand straight away what we mean. Because that will never happen to Bayern. When was the last time Bayern lost something? That must be before the Bundesliga was even founded. So this is building up a foundation. And Edin Terzic, I like him. He is, I mean, the story. We could have discussed today that fan who was standing in the stands. He's there. He's a Dortmund. He's black and yellow. This is the man. But at the end of the day, Gabon, I think we could agree on this. Goal difference, yes. Time, yes. That is sport. That is sport. And when you put on a debut and you have Modest, as you were saying, and Reina, and I love the Americans with the Pulisic and Reina, there is always a conspiracy against every American. And I, that is a part of the discussion we, we do have. But I don't think football in a large number is based on decisions, is based on the consequences of your decisions. And I think that is quite illustrative, if this is the English word for it, the way that they kind of lost it at the end. And now, Gab, you can have your big time saying that you can't do that on goal difference. But I think, well, that's a part of, part of the game again. I don't know if you can come back from that. I don't know how long it will take <laughs> them. That's what I mean. Next season, all we're going to talk about from the start of this season to maybe mid-season is Dortmund. If they start not well... Yeah, oh, this is about what, even if they start well, we say okay, they might start well, but we know what happened last year. We will always yeah. come back to yeah. last season, always come back to that mind game. Always, or and yeah, Bellingham won't be there. There might be a few changes. I, I would expect Terzi to still be there, but it's gonna be I don't know, man. Okay, hey, so for those people who expect maybe a different winner next year, when you look at Borussia Dortmund next year, they'll be without Bellingham almost certainly. We know Leipzig will be without Christopher and Kuhn, yeah. who not only their best player, but the top scorer in the Bundesliga yeah. this season, alongside the legendary Nicholas Fulcru. Um It's another Bayern win before, Bayern even, is, before yeah. we even get started. And that, I think, is what some people will depress some people. I, I want to end it on this point. This is not, people said, oh, look, you're a Dortmund fan. I'm not a Dortmund fan. I could care less about Dortmund. In fact, Dortmund annoy me many times. Um, 
And by the way, it was just during Remember years ago, they, they, they played Knauf in some yeah. big uh, Champions League game. And he's the guy who also for his debut, they started him. I mean, yeah. I, whatever. Not, not, not the way I would do things. But in Italy, for many years, we had a rule that said if two teams finished level at the top of the table at the end of the season, it's so special. We cannot give the title based on head to head or based on goal difference. It actually had only happened once in history, I think in 1964, Inter against Bologna. Then they changed it a few years ago. They said, let's become like everybody else. Let's do it either based on head to head, like they do in, uh, in, in Spain, or goal difference, you like hate they do that, in England. Don't you? I absolutely hate <laughs> this. It is such a rare occurrence. <laughs> I think for a World Cup final, and if two teams finish level, you send everybody home and you say, guys, let's come back and let's settle this on the pitch. Nah. I'll tell you why briefly. You could all tell me that. <laughs> By the way, this is not an excuse. Everybody knows ahead of time that it's goal difference or head to head. Leaving aside the obvious that it would be incredibly exciting. Leaving aside the obvious that it robs us of finishes, right? Because if you have a situation where one team is 20 goals ahead on goal difference, uh, and you know, or head to head, you know that they can't make up the difference. Um, it creates potentially weirdo suspicious situations with goal differences yeah. has happened in the past and teams with nothing to play for um it's arbitrary to the point that you know if a po opposing goalkeeper gets sent off after five minutes in a game and then somebody else in the reserve gets injured and stuff and Fjortoft goes in goal and make ship 12 goals it's got nothing to do with anything right yeah. um i i think this is what they should do. And I know there's an issue with fixture congestion. Most of all, for me, is the goal of the, the, the point of the season. We decide a champion by who gets the most points. That is the only thing we decided on. Yeah. We don't do it based on who beats who head to head. We don't do it based on goal difference. We don't make the league table based on goal difference. We just do it on points. So if you guys both finish level of points, there's two solutions. Either you share the title, but let's yeah. say that's kind of lame, or you settle it. Mano a mano, you, you, like professionals, you, 90 minutes. You're a good lawyer. You're a good lawyer, Gab. Uh, Thank you. You, 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 could, you could defend that. Uh, I think the, when you compare it with the World Cup final, that's something else, because I, I don't think you can compare cup with league. Uh, that is one thing. Uh, but I, I, I can understand what you do. and I can understand what you're saying. I don't think it's realistic that it will be changed, because it's very accepted by the fans. If I can, at the end of my last speaking time can say two things is that what i think should be changed and, and we're a part of tv industry so i don't think it will be changed but I, I think that the two last rounds should be on the same time i think that the last round when they're playing on different times i don't think that that is fair uh, yeah. in the terms and i just want to play into something else that is maybe another episode another discussion but Maybe if you see the table now, and, and we, you were saying, Gab, with the low low points that the winner got this year is like 11, 12 years ago. Imagine RB Leipzig. Maybe they're sitting there now thinking, and Kunku, if he was fit all season, was this yeah. our big chance to win the league? As for now, if we're going to do a prediction now, the Bayern Munich would probably get a, a, a great striker. Yeah. Tuchel, our main man, will make them win the league with 13 points. All right, Jules, you get the last word on this. Before, <laughs> by the way, before I remind everybody of one other thing, right? We're all used to the playoffs, right? We've got promotion yeah. playoffs in England, in Italy, yeah, and so on. Yeah. Oh, look, somebody can finish in sixth place, 30 points behind the third place team, and then they go, they advance to the Premier League in the playoffs. They get 200 million, richest game in world football. Oh, isn't it great? Isn't it fun? Isn't it wonderful, right? So if people can wrap their heads around that, <laughs> they can wrap their heads around this. Jules, you I love your story. passion, Gavin, but I knew that was coming. The, uh, the penalty. <laughs> we might have gone through this before. Difference. We've had this conversation before. Um, I would, I would happily have a decider, like a decider, like game between Bayern and Dortmund or whoever else is level. Uh, but I think Jan makes some good points as well about there's a reason why there's good difference or head to head. The season is 38 games long, not 39. Even if you're both level, at some point you have to. To to separate two two clubs or two teams who are even if they have the same point and you can understand if if I beat you head to head twice in the season I've been better than you twice mm -hmm. depending on the circumstances. You want to make that argument, then you can't make the thirty eight seasons thirty eight games because it means you lost to somebody else. Right? But, but, but then goal difference, right. which I know you hate even probably more than head to head. <laughs> 
So it makes sense for some people. So. You know, what's really funny is if you go down the tiebreakers, even in the Premier League at some point, I'm assuming you get to drawing lots, right? If they have the same yeah. goal difference, same head to head, same goal scored, same yeah. goal scored, you know, which I don't know. It seems. I think the playoff, though, Cab. I think the playoff, Cab. I think that the metaphor with the with the playoff is interesting. But listen, when when you do like Luton now, they got the extra chance. Sheffield United and Burnley are already up. They are there on merit. So the third position, the third league going into the Premier League, that is an extra chance. I think well, that is just a do big that for difference. Fun. No, no, but Let's I'm saying... Let's introduce Champions it, League playoffs. I want to yeah, see more if, of Freiburg if, if Burn, if Burn and Berlin. Sheffield, If Burnley and Sheffield United also have to go into playoffs, that would, people wouldn't love that right. that much as they do now. No, I'm with you on that. Uh, Jan, it's been a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you so much. Likewise. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.